Alright, I'm gonna open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, alright? Yeah, fine then. He slid the key into the keyhole and turned it. And then orgasm! He felt it unlock. <gasps> the door opened with a soft, melancholy creak. Beyond it lay a simple white hallway. There was no fanfare or confetti. <laughs> okay. Obviously, there was no one there to applaud them. They simply walked through the door. That was it. Alright, let's get going. Hey man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy? Well, I mean, I am happy we found a way out, but it's not the way out of the boat, so, uh, you know, get a little excited. Not really. Jippe turned away from Seven and took his first step down the simple white hallway. My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Clover had told him only a few minutes before that her brother was probably dead and she was likely to follow him. I don't think so. We need a body. He seems too smart to just be dead. I think if he is dead, I mean, I, I said earlier, like, it would be a pretty big turning point, but I think if it was going to happen, it would have happened back then. How could he pretend to be happy after hearing something like that? I found it again! Yay! Oh, God. The one really slow part of the game is those you found it. They left the operating room. The hallway took them around several corners and past several doors, but they were all locked. <gasps> Until at last. The final door was hidden in a corner of the hall. Drippe grabbed the handle. As he made to push it open, a voice stopped him. The voice came from behind him and belonged to neither Seven nor Clover. <gasps> Who could it be? Jumpy! Okay, reunited, yay. That was quick, kinda. Although, for me, it's been over two weeks. Um, not since the last recording session, but since the one before that. But, uh, still, that was quick. He spun around. He saw someone running toward him from the other end of the hallway. Oh, God! There were three people coming toward Junpei and his companions. Santa, Lewis, and June! They pulled up short in front of Junpei, breathing hard. Whoa! How is this? Why are you confused again? We saw this coming. What are you doing here? You know what we're doing here. We didn't... Before I could finish, Clover spoke. Hey, guys. Could you come take a look at this? She was standing near the end of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she'd found. There was something on the wall at the end of the hallway. A map? Um, a map, um, the map, um, the, it's in my head. I haven't, li I haven't watched that since I was like four or something, but it's still in my head. It'll never leave! Okay, map of the ship's interior. It said sea deck in the upper left corner. It was, they assumed, a map to the floor they were on. Door 7 and... Door 8. The map confirmed they were what they already knew. Both doors eventually led to the hallway where they had found themselves. What about door 3? In fact... Yeah, isn't that what I said? We aren't going to be split up permanently till we find door 9. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door 9. That's how the Nonary game works. Junpei looked at the map of the ship's interior again. As he looked more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. What? What did they see? They moved as one for the door. I'm looking. I'm trying to see. 
Uh, they're looking for door three, or I don't know. He pulled the map of the ship's interior off the wall and put it in his pocket and followed the others. The six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. He took hold of the door and spoke, without looking back at the other five. Ready? I'm gonna open it. Oh. Slowly, all five nodded their silent... their silent assent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. So, is this going forward or going backward? They poured through the doorway and into the room. Even without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. They were just where the map had said they would be. The same room they'd been in not so very long ago. The tremendous central hospital room with the empty beds from wall to wall. Oh no, this means Ace is here, right? And he's still sleeping. Oh, and that was all for nothing because we found this room again. And we can probably press forward anyways. Oh, that sucks. Um, hopefully, like, um, we can still, like, wake him up and take him with us and, or something. Because, uh, yeah, we can actually press forward now. Um, I'm assuming we went through the door without a number. Because I don't think we could have went through the three door. I don't think it works that way. But, uh, yeah. I see. Oh, Ace, you're there! I believe I understand what you're saying. The six of you split into two teams and went through doors seven and eight. Oh, okay, I thought you were, like, asleep. Okay. You solved the puzzles in the operating room and the laboratory, and then met one another in the hallway after opening your respective locked doors. He looked like anyone might after only just waking up. Okay, but it seemed that his brain was working as well as ever. I'm so glad he's not, like, gone from the LP. He had managed to grasp, summarize, and understand each team's report. At any rate, I feel a bit silly for my little show of altruism. I'm sure you'll be back for me. I did hope you'd come back, but I confess I didn't think you'd be back so soon. <laughs> uh. Ace shook his head with a rueful smile. Well, we saw each other again, and we ain't dead, so I said that's good enough. Seven smiled. Anyway, I say we get out of this creepy old place. We found the key we need. The key? Ain't that what I just said? I'm talking about the Jupiter key. We found it in the operating room. Right, Junpei? Junpei nodded. Ah, the solar system keys. Actually, we found one in the laboratory, too. The Earth Key. Lotus does have a still warm key with an Earth symbol on it. And we have, like, one more, don't we? Like, or even two? Do we, is there, did they find one in the other room that we don't know about? I might lose it. It's probably better if you hold on to it. That way it won't be my fault if it gets lost. And with that, she pressed it into Jopei's hand. He felt slightly less than honored. As a group, they now had three keys that had not been used. Oh, okay, so it was just... Yeah, alright. So they didn't get another key. Uh, it was just the key that we got in our place originally. In the first section of doors, I mean. The Jupiter key, which had been found in the operating room. The Saturn key card, which had been found in the kitchen. The Earth key, which Lotus had just handed to Junpei. Junpei turned the new keys into his... Tucked the new keys into his pocket. June spoke up. The Jupiter key is supposed to be for the door at the end of that long... straight hallway, right? I'm blanking. Which one is this? Yeah, um, I'll go with it. If the map's right, then it connects to the central staircase. Okay. The next to the stairs... Wait. They were the first words anyone had heard of Clover in quite some time. Her face suggested they weren't going to be very happy words. What about door three? Look. You saw the map, right? It's the same as seven and eight. It would just lead us back to the big hospital room. There's no point to seeing what's on the other side of that door. There is a point. At least there is for me. Not only that, but what if there's another uh, solar system key in there? 
There were tears in her eyes, but she glared at Seven as hard as she could, just the same. She looked very much like a frightened puppy. There was a man alive who could have resisted those eyes. <laughs> Seven looked everywhere in the room except at Clover and muttered and coughed apologies under his breath. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. Snake might be on the other side of door three. Somehow. Magically. And knowing him, he could have maybe, like, there might actually be a fourth solar system card that was found, uh, in the first set of rooms that he just found himself and kept hidden. Um, and maybe he used that and got somewhere. It's possible. Clover nodded once. But only once. The next person to speak was Ace. It's nice to have you around again. Very well. I'll be coming with you then. I completely forget what everyone sounds like. They're all jumbling together now. Like, I've got the female ones. I've got myself, which, Junpei, which is just myself, I've got, and then, like, Santa, Ace, and Seven are all kind of in that low octave. Um, actually, no, no, Seven was Gumshoe, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, that's for Seven, well, I, I just remember that now, because I was thinking about how, how, how Snake is, like, Edgeworth, okay, yeah, anyways. I've had a nice long rest. I think it's time I was up and about again. So, Seven, you'll help me, won't you? Huh? <laughs> huh? Me? Junpei did the calculations quickly in his head. Uh, seven plus one is eight, eight plus four is twelve, one plus two is three. Which means I'd be back with my- which means I'd be back with my, uh, standard group of pals again, essentially. 4 plus 1 is 7, equals 12, this is 1 plus 2 is 3. It looked like 7 was doing them too. Last, he gave up. Damn, well, I guess that's how it's gotta be. So I'm going with you, huh? <coughs> I, I'm doing the low voice again. So I'm going with you, huh? <laughs> yes, you are. Alright, let's get moving. Alright, finally got my voices sorted out, and they're about to leave now. Gosh! And so it was decided that Clover, Ace, and Seven would discover what lay beyond door three. Interesting. Oh. I mean, I I'm, I'm mostly just talking about uh, what's being said right now. And I mean, I guess that's not a bad thing. But that's because there's not really much uh, going on in terms of what's going on. There was, there was the whole, oh, Ace is still here. But after that, it's just like, they're just kind of recapping essentially now. Uh, and that was quick, though. They're actually just... They're actually just going through. Okay, we're heading out. Be careful. Whoa, I don't think I'd be hearing that from you, Lotus. <laughs> don't let it get to your head. I'd be in trouble if the three of you bought it. The rest of us can't open the, the nine door. Oh yeah, always thinking of yourself, huh? The truth comes out. Seven nodded, as if this answer made much more sense, and pulled the lever on the red. Yeah, she's kind of a bitch. Okay, <laughs> so I just meet you again and you're leaving me already. Great. So maybe Ace always ends up staying behind. I don't know. I don't know how much of this is branched yet or not. I'm not sure how much of this... I'm not sure if it's just mini branches and then connecting again, or, or if there's major branches in this game or not. I don't know. I have no idea. Anyways. Okay. Let's go. The door opened and Ace, Clover, and Seven jumped through it. For all I know, no matter what I've done until, up till now, this would be the same. I don't know. Six, seven, eight. And it's closed. After exactly nine seconds, the door closed noisily. Alright, we should get moving too. Huh? Get moving. Where are we going? Everyone except Lotus seemed rather confused. Well, it would be a waste of time to just sit around, wouldn't it? Let me explain. I get it. We're going to see if we can get anywhere interesting with the Jupiter key. Yes. If we're lucky, we might find Snake. They were at the end of the hallway lined by individual hospital rooms. 
The Jupiter symbol was engraved on the keyhole. I thought I might have to remember this stuff and go looking around all Ace Attorney style, but no, the game just leads me to it. <laughs> Alright, Jinpei, open it, if you please. Yeah, on it. I guess I'm just the resident door opener. The resident do everything guy. If it's a trap, I'll fall into it. Oh boy. <laughs> Junpei pulled the Jupiter key out of his pocket and slid it into the keyhole. He twisted. With a nice sharp click, he felt the door unlock. Alright, ready guys? It's not like you're going in a number door. You can easily go back. Junpei's companions nodded. He nodded back, then slowly and quietly opened the door. Inside was exactly what we expected to see from the map of the ship's interior. And I completely forgot. Uh, they were in a tremendous hall, almost like a ballroom, with a massive central staircase. Yeah, I'm really hoping that uh, from now on I can like do all this without any massive breaks. Uh, I, I hope to do it all without any massive breaks, but uh, things happen. So hopefully from now on I can you know stay stay focused in the game. Great, back to the beginning. You sure this is a good idea? What do you mean? Well, we already searched every inch of this room, didn't we? I'm asking you if there's any reason we came back here. Well, I believe there was a place that had the Earth symbol, I remember that. And there might have even been place, a place with the uh, other key card that I forget the symbol of. But the, the one that's not a key, but a card. Of course there's a reason. Of course there's a reason. Man, sometimes can't tell if you're smart or just lucky. Huh? This! Junpei pulled two things out of his pockets. The Saturn key card and the Earth key. Santa cocked his head to one side like an inquisitive bird and looked at them. After several long moments during which it became apparent that Santa had no idea what the cards meant, June took pity on him. Don't you remember, Santa? In on C deck. Where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? <gasps> oh boy, elevator ride! And next to the elevator, there's a card reader with the Saturn symbol on it. And on A deck, on the, the door to the left, there was a keyhole with the Earth symbol on it, I think. So the two keys that Jumpy has... Should let us use the elevator on the door on a deck, huh? Yes, that's right. June smiled, pleased with herself. So did Santa. All right, I got it. Are we gonna split into two groups again? We might end up doing that. I'll be the first time we're in three groups. Well, four if you can't snake wherever he is. Let's get started then. Actually, unless you count Ace being left behind, but yeah, he really wasn't doing anything. Yeah, well, I was just supposed to say that. What do you say we split into two teams? Lois and I will search the Earth one, so you, c you two can search Santa Saturn, all right? I don't know if that's the best idea. I mean, for one thing, me and June have lots of sexual tension and could just do it and waste a lot of time. And for the other thing, you two seem to hate each other. Unless that's all an act. I don't know. Sounds good. Jump ahead to the Earth. Handed the Earth key to Santa. They decided that their initial search should be brief, only ten minutes. They'd meet back near the staircase once they were done. Jinpei and June headed for the elevators. Sure enough, there was a card reader bolted to the wall next to the left elevator. He lined up the Saturn key card and swiped it through the reader. A light on the upper left corner blinked to life. Great! Looks like it's working now. Alright, now how do I call the elevator? There was, a si there was a single button to the right of the elevator door. On the button was the upside down triangle, the universal symbol for down. There didn't appear to be an up button. Jinpei pushed it. He didn't have much of a choice. But it's a one-way trip, so we can't go back. Dun dun da. Who knows? I think the number door is the only one-way things, though. It, it opened. Ugh, oh, the inside metal reminds me of Portal. Look, Jumpy. 
June's voice was excited, but Jinpei could hear a tinge of anxiety. Sweet, it opened! Let's get going! He grinned at June and stepped toward the open door. As he was about to set foot in it, he felt a hand on his arm. Wait! What? I'm not really... Uh, I just... Oh, gosh. Junpei was at something of a loss. What, he got motion sickness or something? What could you possibly be so frightened of? Probably afraid of... being locked up alone with a boy. They could only go down. <laughs> they could only go down. She was afraid because the only elevator button pointed down. That meant, of course, the elevator couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on. As he thought about it, Jinpei realized he hadn't seen elevators in the A or B decks near the central staircase. All of which meant that the elevator could only convey them to the lower decks. And the floor below the one they were on, D-deck, should be completely submerged. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That meant... Hey, wait a minute. This elevator came up from somewhere under us, right? Uh, well, yeah, I guess it did. It didn't open right away after you pressed the button. There was a m motor noise, like it was moving, and then it opened. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So take a look inside. Jinpei jerked his head toward the interior of the elevator. So yeah, D-Deck isn't entirely flooded. It's not wet at all, is it? The walls and even the floors are totally dry. Even the floor. Yeah. Zero has quite a bit of control over how much gets uh, wet. Oh, you're right, they are. She looked around the elevator, slightly embarrassed. Well, let's test it. You wouldn't just kill us like this. Um, I doubt it. Test it? Yeah, watch this. Junpei put one foot in the elevator and bent around the corner of the door until he could see the floor buttons. There were only two, E and C. E? Even lower than D. He pushed the E button and jumped out of the elevator. The door slid shut and they heard the grinding of the motor as the elevator car moved down. I get it, they're, uh, they're testing it to see for sure if it's going to be waterlogged. A few months later, they heard the sound of the elevator door grinding open several floors below. Jinpei nodded to June and pressed the elevator button again. A few months later, the elevator returned. And of course, not wet at all. The door slid open, and just as Jinpei had expected, there was no water to be found. See? Jinpei couldn't resist puffing out his chest just a little bit. That's right, I'm a real man. June, however, still looked confused. What does that mean? How could the E-deck be safe if the D-deck is full of water? Well, here's what I think. The elevator shaft and E-deck must be watertight and separated from whatever the ship's been punctured. Wherever the ship's been punctured. If we're even on an actual ship. <laughs> There's still a possibility we're not. Here, let me show you. He pulled out his notebook and pen and sketched out a rough illustration. <laughs> yeah, very rough. I see. So this is why the ship hasn't sunk? The shape of the inside keeps it from... keeps it from all filling with water? Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Jinpei continued talking as he closed the notebook and slipped it back into his pocket. So I'm gonna go down and check it out. You stay here, alright? Um, but... Come on, just do it, alright? He gave June's shoulder a reassuring squeeze, then hopped in under the elevator. Yeah, real men check things first. He pushed the E button and the door began to close. And then we come up and June is dead! Ugh. June looked worried, her eyes darting back and forth as if she was trying to make a decision, when suddenly... I'm coming with you! Huh? 
The last possible moment, June dashed forward, turning sideways just in time to slip through the gap between the closing doors. Junpei jammed his fingers against the open button, but it was too late. Door had shut, he and June were in the elevator, and it was headed down to E-Deck. Well then, that's that. He was so surprised by June that he didn't even have time to think about what awaited him on the E-Deck. The elevator stopped, and the door slid open. They stepped off onto the floor outside the elevator. Nothing seemed especially unusual. No fish going about their fishy business or jellyfish floating lazily through the water. There was, however, a blowfish. Or at least something that looked very much like one. June's cheeks were puffed out, and her mouth a tiny, intense frown. <laughs> oh, I get it. For a second there, I thought he was looking at an actual blowfish. Hmm. Oh, knock it off. It's just like I thought. This part hasn't flooded. Come on, just look around. There's no water here. June looked around nervously then. Ha! Huh. Exhale. Ah, sorry. I thought it was a different kind of ha. Huh. It's hard to tell. You're right. It's not flooded at all. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah, right on top of us. What's going to happen if the ceiling breaks? We die. Jimbo thought about that for a moment. We'd probably die. Uh, oh no, don't, don't be so casual about something like that. At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can, once we're done looking. Around down here. Lewis and Santa might already be back. Okay. Good idea. Should they glance around the room they'd found themselves in? The first thing he noticed was a set of thick iron bars. Like they do. They ran the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. Oh, we can't go over there. Not yet, anyways. Right. And perhaps... In the corner of the room that housed the elevator, Junpei found an opening. <gasps> he walked up to it and stuck his head around the corner. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! Another door. And, uh, if you look at it upside down... It's a nine! But no, it's actually the sixth door. A long straight hallway stretched out in front of him. That door at the end of the hallway. Something written on it. It's the sixth door. It's another numbered door. Yeah, let's go have a look. Jimpe and June set off down the hallway at a brisk clip, somewhere between a run and a jog. You both know what it is. Before long, they found themselves in front of the door. On it was a number written in bright red paint, or blood, six. That's a different kind of door, though. But uh, it still counts, I think. I knew it. This is a numbered door. And indeed, there was a red bolted to the wall right next to the door. Of course, with only two people, there wasn't much they could do with it. Six, huh? I'm not going to do any much thinking about it, because there's still plenty of combinations. Alright, let's head back. Especially with Ace back in the mix. Yes. Junpei and June turned and headed back to Sea Deck. On the way back, Junpei noticed a map on the wall. As it turned out, it was a burnt map of the ship's interior for E-Deck. Something fishy? No? We don't even get to see it? Is that going to be some big reveal later on where it's like, Look at this! It proves everything! I didn't show it to the player, but it proves everything. Anyways, huh. So you guys found door one. Oh, okay. So how much have we found? We found door five. We found door four. We found three, seven, and eight. We just found six and one. But that only leaves... Um, two and nine, I believe. Yeah. And you know, I've noticed something. I'm not sure if I've brought it up yet, uh, in the LP. But, uh, there's always this pattern that the root number of all the doors we go through is always nine. Um, because the root number, and the reason for that is because the combination of all our numbers, at least if the ninth man was still alive, is nine. Because, uh, you know, one and eight makes nine, two and seven, nine, three and six, four and five, plus nine, it's nine. Um, four and five is nine. Uh, 7 and 8 is uh, 15 plus 3 is 18, which that'll equal 9. Um, and now we have 1 and 6, so this can't be it. Uh, the 2 has got to be lurking around somewhere, which means we might be actually pretty far into this game. Because after these set, after the 1, 6, and probably 2, it's just going to be the 9. And probably what's going to happen is... 
I, I, I don't know. Um, it's kind of hard to call at this point, but probably through one of them is the nine. But no, it's kind of it wouldn't work that way though because hmm, because anywhere can, up to five people can go through one door. So yeah, they all probably all three connect to nine, but I'm not sure how that's gonna go down. Like yes, yeah, so let's vote off people or fight to the death. I don't know. There's probably more to it than that. Or maybe there's some kind of trap where it's like zero never intended to let ever anyone off. Or, but uh, then we find some way anyway? I don't know. They met back up with Santa and Lotus, who explained what they'd found. Apparently, there was another numbered door in A deck, just like the one in E deck, beyond the door that the Earth Key had opened. According to Santa and Lotus, there was a one on the door. Yeah. All told, they had discovered two new doors six and one door, and two is definitely going to be not long after this. Is it? It is interesting that Edek wasn't flooded. Lotus was quiet for a moment, lost in thought. Well, we don't really know if all of Edek is safe. We only checked the area around the elevator. Even so, it's still very interesting. You said the sixth door was there, right? Yes. Then that means Zero planned all this out, even the sinking. That would have meant some pretty serious remodeling of the ship's interior. It's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. That, or we're not even on a ship! Have you considered that? Yeah. I wonder how long it took. I can't even imagine how much it must have cost. What about a ton, that's for sure. Well, that does... go along with what Ace was saying. Remind the class, Junpei, what was Ace saying? The most reasonable explanation would be that this was done by some organization. With access to a whole lot of cash. Does make sense. Uh, I think it's more likely it's one person with a whole lot of cash, or one person who stole this from a whole someone with a whole lot of cash. I don't know. Um, that thought made them all go quiet for a moment. June bit her lip while Lotus sighed softly to herself, and Santa cracked a stiff neck and stared off into the distance at nothing. Um, I don't think it's a very good idea to stay here. June looked up at Junpei with a large, pleading eyes. Yeah, you're right. Ace and his team might be back already. Well, June, Junpei and I should be able to open door one. <laughs> June, Junpei, I should... Yeah, so let's just go right now and abandon everyone else. Huh? You guys leaving me behind? Eight plus six plus... Uh, eight plus six plus five equals nineteen. One plus nine equals ten, which is just one. I think was 10, and then 1 plus 0 is just 1. Just kidding. Alright, let's go. We wouldn't be able to ab abandon you forever anyways. Lotus's words were all the Im the impetus they need. What the frick is impetus? I don't know what that word is. Uh, Lotus's words were all the something they needed. I'm going to guess based on context. Um... All the sarcasm they need, like, basically she was being half serious, as I'm guessing what's going on. Back to the large hospital room they went. And Snake was there! Or, I don't know. I have no idea. This game's actually kind of throwing me for a loop now. I'm not, I, I can't really tell what's going, coming. Like, a lot of times I can call lots of stuff, but now, in this, this game, uh, it's... Kind of hard, cause, cause you know, sometimes you just don't know what direction it's going. Sometimes that's a good thing if it's got good resolution. Other times it's a bad thing because it could just, you know, be going in circles and ends up somewhere really complicated and doesn't even resolve everything or it resolves it weirdly. But uh, hopefully that's not the case for this game. Of course, this game could end on like a cliffhanger because I know there's a sequel.